challenges in the cutting of Obamacare, we want to take a look back at President Trump's to-do list. He told me about his huge plan. It feels great, and it feels great to be with you, and you've been so nice, and thank you. Oh, well, flattery will get you everywhere. <laughs> now, the last time I spoke to you, I presented a signed photograph of myself at Trump Tower. Have you hung it on your wall yet? Oh, absolutely, right on that wall. <laughs> That's fake news. I don't believe it. <laughs> that was fake news. Obamacare repeal could be President Trump's first deal. Are you going to close it? Well, I think it's going to be never easy. You know, health care is a very complex subject. I've been saying that for a long time. Now people are agreeing with me. They understand. And not complex for the ordinary. The answer is yes, we're going to get something done. I think it's going to be terrific. And it's going to be so much better than Obamacare, which really doesn't exist. Right. Because if you allow it to exist for another year, it's going to implode. And, you know, I've been saying for a long time, just walk away for one year the situation out there. So, and it's been that way for years, not just now. It's been that way for years. But if I put together a perfect Democrat bill on health care or anything else for them to sign, you wouldn't get one vote. It's a pretty bad deal. People like Senator Rand Paul, who you ridiculed during the debates, could mess this thing up. Rand Paul shouldn't even be on this stage. He's number 11. He's got 1% in the polls. And how he got up here, there's far too many people. Anyway, I like him. He's become a friend of mine. Uh, and uh, it's hard to believe I ridiculed because he is he's a good guy okay. and he means well and I think ultimately we're gonna all come together it's gonna get done we want something done and also we want to start on the taxes we're gonna cut everybody's taxes including business taxes the middle income taxes everything's gonna be cut income and taxes. I can't do that until we get this done the income tax rate what are we talking about? What would you like to see the top rate be? Well, we're going to get a big reduction. We're going to bring business down to 15 to 20 percent from 36 and 38 and even higher that in certain instances. We're the highest taxed nation in the world. We're going to bring taxes way down. And for middle income, we're also getting rid of brackets. We're going from seven to three or four zero, and that's what it's going to be. It's going to be zero up to a level. Okay. And then it's going to be 12 and a half percent, 15 percent. It's going to be 10 percent. We're working on the different numbers, but it's going to be much lower than it is right now. It'll be the biggest tax cut since Reagan and probably bigger than Reagan. Very but good, because before I need we the money. That, we have to get this good. But before you are in that high bracket, I hope. <laughs> I hope right now you're in the high bracket. Yeah. Well, uh, we saw some of your returns. These people over at NBC News doing everything they can to take you down. What I have here uh, is a copy of Donald Trump's tax returns. We have his federal tax return for one year, for 2005. Yeah. I thought you leaked those returns yourself. It made you look good. You had made $135 million and paid a lot of dough to Uncle Sam. You know, they're bad people. There's something wrong with them. They leaked them. It's illegal to do what they did, I think. You know, I always heard that a tax return was a very sacred kind of a thing you don't leak them standpoint right. my tax returns are good all Pretty of my good. tax returns are good yeah but uh are you going after these leakers be, hard? i'm thinking about it we're looking at it but it's terrible what's going on in washington we have a certain establishment out there that's leaking and if it gets down to other things even more important than that but a tax return is a very important thing and you're not supposed to be leaking them and they do right which is they just don't respect the law and we have to change that. Right. The anti-Trump resistance, it's out there in the streets, the strings from behind the scenes. It might be everything. You know, there's some anger and there's great love on our side. I mean, look at the crowds outside. Huge. We have, and they say they've never seen crowds like that ever. They've been here a long time. They've never seen anything like it for the country stars, for anything. And that's love. We have great love. That's how we won. You have a lot of love on your side. And then there's also people burning things in the street. Do you think President Obama wants you to succeed? Well, you know, he's been very nice to me personally, but his people haven't been nice. And there's great animosity out there. There's, uh, the level of anger is hard to believe. So while he's nice personally there doesn't seem to be a lot of nice things happening behind the scenes and that's unfortunate the media pretty vicious not just to you but to your family how do you process that optimism's up the highest in 15 years yeah. and much more than that it'll turn out to be uh things are just going really well for the country uh you look at the border down now 61 percent since the inauguration wow stock market's up 15 percent almost 16 percent since the inauguration over three trillion dollars of value has been created many jobs have been created i mean we're really look i inherited a mess okay the middle east was a mess 
people wanting to get jobs is a mess, despite the numbers. You know, you hear numbers, but you have millions of people out there that want to get jobs, they can't get jobs because we don't have good jobs. But they're coming back. Ford is coming back. General Motors is coming back. Fiat Chrysler is coming back. Uh, we just had a big meeting in Detroit with the car manufacturers, and it was unbelievable what's going to be happening. So ultimately, that's the thing that talks. And as you probably saw, the polls that came out today, I'm at my, the only ones I guess I shouldn't have paid attention to were the exit polls during Election Day <laughs> right. because I was saying, boy, I think I'm doing better than that. And it turned out that we did. Let's do a Waters World quiz. Okay. Don't be nervous. Okay, I won't. I, I think promise. you'll do just fine. Chuck Schumer, the president of CNN, and Alec Baldwin. If you had to fire one person right now, who would you fire? Well, uh, I think the Alec Baldwin situation is not good. Chuck, I'm very disappointed because he's a guy that should make deals for the people, right. not as Democrat or Republican. I thought he'd be a deal maker, and instead he's a you know just an obstructionist. So I'm disappointed in him. And Jeb Zucker, I mean, I got him the job. <laughs> I recommended him, and I didn't recommend. I got him the job. And CNN is just you know fake news. Who would I say? I, I just. I don't want to say, but I will say I'm disappointed in all three. I think the portrayal of me is ridiculous. Mm -hmm. Hi, Steve. You look rested. Thank you. <laughs> Next question. What is going to be done first, building the wall or defeating ISIS? Well, you see we're doing very well in the Middle East over the last four weeks. That's another thing. I mean, we're not playing games anymore. And we're letting the generals and the captains and the majors and the people on the ground that graduated from West Point. And soon we had almost 200 bidders to build the wall. We have great pricing coming in. We have some great designs coming in. I think the wall's going to start very soon. Are you going to pick the design for the wall? I'll be very much involved. When it comes to design, I'm very good at that stuff. And building on time, on budget, that's what I do. OK. Let me know when they break ground. I might be down there with a shovel. Good. Maybe I'll be down there with you. OK. Um, the lightning round. This is the last part. I'm going to name a name, and then you give one or two words to describe that person, OK? okay. Kellyanne Conway. A very nice woman. <laughs> Hillary Clinton. Disappointed. Mark Cuban. Uh, backed me all the way, but when I wouldn't return his phone calls, he went the other way, picked the wrong horse. Yes, he did. Vladimir Putin. Don't know him, but certainly he is a tough cookie and I don't know how he's doing for Russia. We're going to find out one day, I guess. Elizabeth Warren. I think she'd lose so badly. <laughs> I think she hurt, honestly. I think she hurt Hillary Clinton very badly. Why? I watched those speeches, the anger, the hatred in her heart. And I said, you know, she's really bad for Hillary. I watched that last couple of weeks where she was getting up with that craziness and that anger. I got news for you, Don. Trump, women have had it with guys like you. And nasty women have really had it with guys like you. Pocahontas would not be proud of her as her representative, believe me. I think she's probably going to run against you, Elizabeth Warren. I hope so. <laughs> what do I hope? So that would be a dream come true. Snoop Dogg. Well, look, I think there was terrible because not because of me I think it's terrible to do that to any president any person I think it was pretty low life his career is failing and he's getting a lot of publicity on it but I think I think it was a terrible thing to do personally last one Jesse Waters tremendous future uh, tremendous potential should be making good money your agent should be very happy and I enjoy your show and honestly you've been so nice to me that this is why I turned on the biggest shows on television, and I, here I am. It's Water's World. <laughs> Thank you very much, Mr. Thank you. President. Thank you, Jesse. Great Appreciate job. Appreciate it. Even before President Trump took office in January, his entire family had become the targets of harassment. Last Christmas, a Hunter College professor on the left and his attorney husband on the right verbally assaulted Ivanka Trump in front of her three small children while on a commercial flight in New York. The incident sparked outrage and a petition for the professor to be removed from his post at Hunter. So Waters World went to the school to talk to some of his students and also caught up with his husband.
The daughter of the president-elect was sitting in the middle seat of a JetBlue flight out of JFK earlier today with her husband and their three children. That's when one of the passengers is accused of verbally accosting her. Professor Matt Lassner here at Hunter College was involved in harassing Ivanka Trump and her baby on a flight. Yeah, that's not cool at all. What do you think about his behavior? I think it was inappropriate. I feel like she's a human, so she deserves respect as anyone else does. Yeah, it's scary. There's a petition Actually. to remove him as professor here. Do you support that? I mean, sure. Any harassment is not, like, you know, I can't accept that as a woman. I feel like no school should employ somebody like that. No. Do I think you should be removed? No, of course not. Would you be okay if Hunter College employed a professor who harassed Chelsea Clinton and her baby on the flight? I mean, I'm not really a Chelsea Clinton supporter either. Uh, there should be some type of repercussion for his behavior. What type of repercussion? Maybe he can be put on like a probation or um, some type of removal for a short period of time. Do you think the school president is going to abide by this petition? Well, I hope so. I mean, if there's proof about that, I really hope that they do something about it. Would you feel comfortable taking this professor's class? No, <laughs> not at all. How you doing this morning? I wanted to talk about your behavior on the flight, sir. Do you regret verbally abusing Ivanka Trump on the plane? You harassed a woman with her baby on a flight. You proud of that? Real class act, aren't you? Now you're afraid to show your face? I'm giving you an opportunity to apologize, sir. Nothing to say? Coming up, a classic shootout with Perez Hilton. I care about America. Donald Trump doesn't care about America. Donald Trump doesn't care about you. Donald Trump cares about himself. I feel glorious, glorious. Got a chance to start again. I was born for this, born for this. It's who I am. I put up again. Fox News Channel is bringing you an all-American New Year's celebration from New York City and around the country. Catch the biggest live performances and join the conversation using hashtag Fox News 2018. Kick back and watch the ball drop with your hosts Kennedy and Jesse Waters live from the heart of Times Square. Our must-see coverage begins New Year's Eve at 8 p.m. Eastern right here on Fox News Channel. Hollywood's legion of liberals have been freaking out over the Trump presidency since well before he took office. Remember this? What is evident is that Donald Trump lacks more than the qualifications to be president. He lacks the necessary stability. And clearly the respect for the constitution of our great nation. You have position. The authority. And the opportunity to go down in the books as an American hero. Who changed the course of history. And just hearing the word, our economy is going to go to I care about America. Donald Trump doesn't care about America. Donald Trump doesn't care about you. Donald Trump cares about himself. Insane. This is just. Things are not going to be OK, people. They're not going to be OK. So does professional gossiper Perez Hilton still feel that way? He joins me now. So, Perez, you have to admit you were wrong about the economy. It's actually uh, kicking into high gear. The stock market's on a record tear. Will you at least admit that? Well, it is because he's being great for Wall Street, which, correct me if I'm wrong, I thought he campaigned against that. Well, I mean, Wall Street's doing well, and all the men and women who have investments throughout this country are probably reaping some nice rewards if they have any money in the stock market. But let me ask you a question, because I am very concerned about you. You saying people aren't going to do well. Are you okay? Are you doing okay, Perez? 
Oh, I said I would be okay because I'm well off. I was more concerned for the people that aren't well off because I'm one of those bleeding heart liberals that cares about other people and not just my own financial interests. The wealthy people of America will continue to be okay. It's those that aren't wealthy that I am concerned about, and I don't know if they're going to be okay. Okay, well, I think maybe in a couple months we'll have you back, and if some people that didn't have jobs now do have jobs, maybe we could all sing Kumbaya. Let me ask you this, though, because the SNL folks, and I know you're tied into the Hollywood crowd, franchise going pretty aggressively against people in the Trump orbit. Let's take a look at how they depicted Kellyanne Conway on Saturday Night Live. Take a look. Kellyanne, what the hell are you doing here? <laughs> You weren't answering my calls. You changed your number. I'm not going to be ignored. So I thought it was pretty funny when Melissa McCarthy did the Spicer imitation. That was hilarious. But then to go after Kellyanne Conway and depict her like a slut. What? I don't know, putting her in kind of like a, a cheap silk negligee and acting seductive and sultry. I mean, you didn't see that at all? No, I did, but they were spoofing Fatal Attraction. That's what they were going for. Right, with they weren't Kelly and Conway. Her or painting her out to be something she's not. Okay, well, I think many people that saw that might not have agreed with your interpretation. But, you know, this and is just... many people that saw it probably didn't agree with yours either. Well, I will leave that to the audience to decide. This isn't the first time SNL's done this. You know, they've had writers go after Baron Trump as a school shooter. You know, they've depicted the Trump team as, as that bigots. That was only one writer. And let me finish. They've, they've, the they've gone TV after show. the Trump team as, as bigots and racists and idiots. Why do you think the... the um, I don't think they're being hateful. I think they're being humorous. And if people can't find the humor in it, they probably shouldn't be watching it then. Well, I think some of it's funny, but some of it's just mean and nasty. Um, you know, well, maybe that's just me. Just because I think if... It, idiot you think is mean and nasty. Well, I don't know. I, I just... advise the same to others. I just think it's if... It's choice. I, I, you, you know, know I, I encourage more people to watch Fox News and read Breitbart if they're offended by their what they're watching on, uh, you know, NBC or reading on CNN. Listen, I'm not offended by it. Uh, I think everybody can watch Saturday Night Live. That's fine. I just think most of it is pretty nasty. That's just my opinion. Let me ask you a question about this, though. The New York Times writer, journalist, he calls himself, was at some party. Well, it might be her. We don't know who the gender. Was it, let me just person. finish. Let me just finish. Was at a party, um, and the swimsuit model picked up on something this journalist said, and we have the tweet that she described him saying right here. We have it here. Sat next to a journalist from the New York Times last night. Slut shaming. I don't care about her nudes or sexual history, and no one should. So I noticed you didn't really cover this story on your website, Perez. Why we did. Did you? I didn't see it on there. Why, why couldn't I find it on the website? Uh, you probably didn't look closely enough. Just It's on there right now if you want to go search the Melania Trump category. And I agree. It's not because with... I saw it was covered in the lawsuit Melania had, but this actually wasn't. Maybe I'm wrong. Go ahead. No, we covered it. I can send you the link right now if you would like. Okay, please do. So, okay. wait, so tell me, Hold why on. do you, why do you, you the think link. the New York Times is so anti-Melania? Melania Trump, I'm about to send you the link. Okay. Take your and time. And I'm not going to continue with the interview until I do that, because I have obsessive thinking. Okay. Perez, you know, we don't have time for you to go through the webs called Michelle Obama a hooker. Wouldn't you find that offensive? And wouldn't you find that on your website pretty quickly? Uh, yes, I would find that offensive. And I do find it offensive that that journalist called her a hooker. OK, why do you so attractive? I mean, I would disagree with you there. I don't think that people smear her at all. I think most people actually feel sad for her. Well, I mean, I, I just of... told you about Chelsea Handler going after her. She's been depicted in many magazines yeah, I, and like periodicals said, unfairly. She's not most people. She's just one person. I and, and like I just said, if you were listening to me, I pity her. Why I don't, do you I pity don't, Melania I, Trump? I, I, what? Why? Uh, because I would perceive her to be uh, somebody who's not very human feelings. 
Um, you know, I, I, I could just read her body language when she's with her husband. It's a man who won't open the door. She seems to be happy to me, but maybe I am wrong. Perez, thank you so much for joining Waters World. I really appreciate it. And I uh, look back to having you on again. Sure. Thank you. Appreciate you having me on. With moviegoers around the world flocking to theaters this holiday season to see the latest installment of the Star Wars saga, I traveled to a galaxy far, far away to try my hand at using the Force. Oh, Jesus. R2. Live long and prosper. No, that's incorrect. What do you mean? May the force be with you. Er, 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 er. <laughs> <laughs> do you have a girlfriend? Yes, she's right there. What do you think about your boyfriend's obsession with Star Wars? I'm right there along with him. What character are you? Luke Skywalker. Luke. I am the father. No! Do you have a crush on Princess Leia? Well, that's a loaded question considering who I'm dressed as today, isn't it? I just saw Luke talking to some girl over there. I don't know. Well, I mean, that one thing happened, but we kind of don't talk about that anymore. What kind of blaster you got there? One that'll send you far, far away from me. You stuck up, half-witted, scruffy-looking nerf herder. Do you believe the Force is real? I think. It touches all of us. It surrounds us, it penetrates us, it binds the galaxy together. Is this like Christmas for you? Yes. Except for when the movies come out at Christmas time now, too. Are you going to be doing any speed dating here later? I will be. And I will use my Jedi mind tricks on everyone I come encounter with. Oh, Including nervous. you, it's working right now. What are you doing? Everyone else has a collection of toys and helmets, and I have my Star Wars collection on me. If I was to get a Star Wars tattoo, where would I get it and what should it be? The Death Star on your butt. That would take a lot of force. The force would have to be with you. Pokey religions and ancient weapons are no match for a good blaster at your side. If Donald Trump was a Star Wars character, who would he be? Obi-Wan Kenobi, because he is wise. Job of the Hutt. He's <laughs> orange and mean, so of course. Probably Darth Vader. He would be the Emperor. I can your anger. What are we going to do about Vladimir Putin? Let him be him. We need to deal with us. We have problems here before we can deal with other people's problems. America first? Sure. The serious situation is getting pretty messy. What do you think we should do about that? The serious? And what was your question? <laughs> what do you think we should do about Syria? That's not my part of the galaxy. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know how to fix it. <laughs> what do you think we should do about Kim Young il I don't know. Use the force. <laughs> Watch it, boy. I'm waters. President Trump causing people to hire professional cuddlers. That's next. May your path be the sound of your feet upon the ground. Carry on. News Channel is bringing you an all-American New Year celebration from New York City and around the country. Catch the biggest live performances and join the conversation using hashtag Fox News 2018. Kick back and watch the ball drop with your hosts Kennedy and Jesse Waters live from the heart of Times Square. Our must-see coverage begins New Year's Eve at 8 p.m. Eastern right here on Fox News Channel. from America's news headquarters are spreading across the Deep South. Cold advisories are in effect in Alabama, Louisiana, and Mississippi. Atlanta is in an unusually long stretch of cold weather as well. Those frigid temperatures blanketing parts of the country, creating dangerous driving conditions. Snow being blamed for this 20-car pileup in Michigan. 
And in New York City, they are getting ready for the ball drop at Times Square. Two million people are expected, and they are being warned that this New Year's Eve could be the coldest since 1917. The temperature expected to be 11 degrees with a wind chill of zero. Security, it's tightest ever. Extra personnel will be on duty. Today, the entire world can see that America is coming back, and America is coming back rapidly and strongly. They see that with what's going on economically. The United States has added more than 2 million jobs and are still struggling to cope with this win. They need some extra TLC. Recently, I spoke with the co-founder and CEO of TheCuddleist.com, Adam Lippin, and certified cuddleist Brianna Kujiata to help explain the phenomenon. So, Brianna, I'm going to start with you. Um, take a look at your bio here. We have it on the website. It says, I specialize in listening and laughter and have a passion for nurturing through non-sexual cuddling. So cuddling is not sexual. Is that what we're saying? Correct. So people come to you because... Attention and um, someone to just spend some time with. And they're cuddling. Now, you're the cuddler following the code of conduct, keeps it non-sexual, and pretty much everything is, is up for negotiation. Okay, so uh, spooning or, or touching or stroking, would those be the things that would make people feel better? Those are some of them, but every session is unique. Okay. And, and it, their possibilities are really infinite. Wow, okay, so everything is up for negotiation. and. People aren't turned on at all during the sessions, or they are sometimes? We, we screen people, we do an intake, and we, we talk to them and make sure that they are genuinely interested in a non-sexual experience. So okay. by the time I see them, yeah, okay. we're ready to go. Adam, yes. so people a little upset about President Trump, and you say you've seen your business improve since his election. People are anxious and seeking physical affection. Yeah, so, you know, one of the uh, people, Jim, uh, John actually, who was quoted in the Rolling Stone article which sort of precipitated this, mm -hmm. uh, is an Iraqi veteran that came back. And his, uh, has, he has done talk therapy and medication, and it wasn't really working for him. So he thought some human connection, some healing touch could benefit from him. And he states that this was the most important thing uh, for him, and it's really helping him. And his issue with Trump is that he had a job with the government, and uh, the day of the, the, when Trump won the election, he rescinded, you know, he had a freeze on hiring, so he didn't get his job. And so that, those were some of the issues that he, were, that he was dealing with. And we work with military veterans all over San right. Antonio, Texas, et cetera, that deal with issues of PTSD, right. anxiety, and then some, I, I would imagine some people are just upset with President Trump. Sure. Because he's rattled their cage somehow. And they are looking for someone to cuddle them to make them feel better. Yeah, so we don't, uh, we don't sort of screen based on political affiliation. And we have over 100 cuddlers all over the country, and in red states, purple states, and blue states. And our average age of our client is, um, is in their 50s. Mm -hmm. We don't know their political persuasion. Right. So it could be the kid who's seeing their family for the first time that's nervous to meet their Republican father, or it could be the Republican father nervous to meet their kid who is supporting uh, you know, Bernie Sanders. We don't really know because we don't ask that question. Okay. Now, uh, Brianna, could you show me what cuddling would look like? How, how would some of this touch appear in these sessions? Maybe demonstrate? So, so before every session, something happens, and so Brianna is going to demonstrate. So I'll play the client, and you play the cuddle. Okay, go are. ahead. Cuddle. All right, Adam. So um, I promise that if at any moment I'm feeling uncomfortable, whether that be physically or, or emotionally, I promise that I will speak up. Will you promise to do the same? I do. Okay, thank you. So that's how every session and starts. And then would you guys like to touch each other? or? Well, so Brianna, are you a yes if I put my arm around you? Yes. And so if she says yes, I'd put my arm around her. But the whole concept of this is about consent and boundaries and owning what you want. So for example, a lot of times when a session starts, mm -hmm. the cuddlist will say, okay, how would you like to start your session? The client will say, I don't know. So the cuddlist will say, listen, you're paying for this. This is your hour. And it's $80 an hour. It's $80 an wow. hour. Wow. So, it's a lot of money. I'm, I'm sure it's worth it, Brianna. I'm Listen, sure you're an excellent cuddler. Right now, the government is spending over $4 billion on, with veterans with issues of PTSD just for disability yeah, payments. This might save a lot of money instead of getting them hopped.